Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr, and this is episode 108, titled Ghosting the Devil. And it is a follow-up to the last two episodes, First Date with the Devil and Second Date with the Devil. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com, or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. Jean decided not to tell Anne about the third date. She knew she would disapprove, not because she was dating the devil, but because she didn't really believe Jean any longer. She had seen Dave with her own eyes, and now could only see him as a guy. She would now see it as some sort of mild derangement. She had set it up as a simple dinner date at an Italian restaurant she knew well. It had booths that separated the patrons, enough that they wouldn't be overheard, and enough music and background noise to keep voices from carrying. As usual, she arrived early, and Dave was precisely on time. He walked through the heavy wooden doors, wearing a dark suit that complemented his deep red skin, and probably whatever skin tone everyone else was seeing, she thought. His horns looked as sharp as ever, and Jean wondered briefly if they would be used as weapons if, ever, if anyone ever fought him. This way, the greeter said, and showed them to their booth. Jean had tipped her to make sure their booth was just right for her needs. Thank you, Jean said. Dave allowed her to sit, then took his seat across from her. Cozy, Dave said as the greeter returned to her post. I love it here. I've been here since it opened 15 years ago. And no fan club, Dave noted. Jean wondered again if he knew about Anne watching them during their last date. I've been wondering something, Jean said. Dave just looked at her with a slight grin. Why me? Why are you interested in meeting me, dating me? Why not you? Dave asked. Are you not worthy of my attentions? I... That's not really what I was meaning, she said. It was strange how just a different spin on a question could change it so much. I want to know what your intentions are. What a lovely 19th century turn of phrase, Dave said. No one knows the ins and outs of polite company any longer. My intentions are to have an interesting and enjoyable evening with you followed by the corruption of your immortal soul. Jane didn't know what to say to that. She must have been a bit bug-eyed, because Dave said, or just a ni nice meal out with someone I find interesting. Hmm, I was supposed to find you interesting. Now you find me interesting? It's a shame you feel that way. So when you put Life Coach on your OK Cupid profile, you weren't kidding. No, I wasn't. But you coached them to hell. After a life well lived, yes. But isn't that a steep price to pay? According to who? The big guy? I suppose. Well, like I said the other day, I let the big guy do the punishing. So, yes, you'll be punished. But that's the thing. He's the universe's biggest narcissist. He thinks anyone not basking in the light of his love is essentially being tortured. So, basically, he leaves us alone. It'll be you and a few billion people, mostly free thinkers. Really? Or I'm lying and it's all boiling lava and torture devices. Right. Jean was thinking hard. How much truth she could, be, could she put by his words? How much was mythology? How much fact? And that's when she realized it didn't matter. It didn't matter how much she knew about him, or how much she could trust his truthfulness. It didn't matter how interesting she found him. There just wasn't any real upside. She'd been pulled in by her curiosity, and it had all been interesting. But whether he was the actual devil, a hallucination, or a man using hypnosis, or some other trick, she would not gain by associating herself with him any longer. That left a different problem, which could be minor or life-altering. How to end this? Okay, so you do find me interesting. What exactly do you find interesting? There are billions of people in the world now, and... Billions more over the centuries. I don't know how many people you, you've revealed yourself to, but it's not a lot. Couldn't that be my own decision? Jean stood up. No, I don't think so. It was a gambit, but she decided to see it through. She gave some money to the greeter to make up for the fact that she wasn't eating there and headed home. She watched to make sure she wasn't followed. The real problem was she didn't know what would happen next. Would she be followed? Would he turn back into a normal human, blend in, and be impossible for her to discern? 
Or if it was a man using hypnosis, how could she tell? If something was altered in the future and it wasn't so obviously strange as Dave had been, could she even tell it was happening? Reality fell apart for Jean a little bit that day, and it was frightening, at first. Not knowing what to believe in or what exactly was definitely real made the world seem fluid, strange, and dangerous at first. But after a while, it felt free. Maybe the world wasn't so clear-cut as she had believed, but that also meant the world was more interesting, exciting, and full of possibilities. She felt light, almost as though she might float away into space. People noticed it about her and said she seemed effervescent, more full of humor, and more interested in the little details about other people. After a while, she decided she felt much as if she might have if she'd had a near-death experience, and perhaps she had. She never saw Dave again, never saw anything that seemed terribly strange or supernatural, yet that odd feeling of effervescence never quite left her. She was never exactly the same person again, and she was content. And that's the end of the story. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And thanks for listening. Words and Music, copyright 2019, Cryptobiography LLC, all rights reserved. Characters and events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical. <laughs>